All right, this is the West Brom View here on Terrace Talk, and we're talking all things Jed Wallace and Kipre. We're also going to talk about Swift, and we're going to preview the West Brom fixtures over Christmas and predict how many points they are going to get. And we're going to do that all with our baggish friend, Aaron. How are you, Aaron? Not so bad myself. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, thank you. You're fresh back from Fortress Hawthorns today. Um, Stoke just came and did a number, didn't they? He just couldn't, couldn't find that winning goal. Yeah, I think, I mean, the manager said himself, we weren't very clinical. Um, I mean, obviously, we haven't got the uh, the, the attacking uh, enforcements up front that many teams have. Um, you know, there's a few injuries in the squad regardless anyway. But, I mean, we've still got the players, you think, that'll be able to score a few goals. But, obviously, just I, I, I put it down to luck today. I think there was a lot of a lot of misfortune, really, in, in, the, in the team. Um, a lot of times where we could have scored, you're like, oh, well... It could go either way, but I mean, overall, we're, we're quite unlucky to not win that game, I thought. I, I want to highlight Kipri, which, which you know, you, you've spoken about many, many times. There was a tackle at the end of the first half, which just, I think, epitomises just everything about him. Just, um, it's absolutely immense, isn't he? It, when he in, in his tackles, he just took the ball off Stoke players all day long. He's, um, is he one that you're going to have to really fight to keep hold of in January? Um, I mean, considering he's got about six months left on his contract coming into January, you think so? Because obviously there'd be a, a probably, I mean, a fair few teams abroad as well, not just in England, but abroad as well. That'll probably think, oh yeah, you know, I'm getting him on a free year, free year. So uh, it'd, be, it'd be quite a good transfer for many teams, I reckon. But I mean, he's 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 really settled into the team now. I mean, at the start of the season, you would have thought, oh god, he's you know, he's Kipper again, get him out of the team, don't ever see him back. But in the in the half season that he's played so far, honestly, God, he's he's, he's been. Most likely our best player. I mean, there aren't enough superlatives to describe how he plays. It's just a week after week. It's eight out of tens every week at least minimum. He's, he's never dropped below it. Yeah. Oh, just a word on Jed Wallace as, as well, who, again, I thought it was an excellent game against Stoke. Yeah, and against Rotherham as well. Smith, I mean, he scored that free kick on one. I think that was a very good strike. Um, but today, I think, was one of his better performances. I think it, it was a true captain performance and it, it appeared to him the reason why he is the captain of the team is, you know, he's when the team weren't performing so well, he was rallying the troops. You could see it from on the stands. He, he was really, vo- he's, really he's a very vocal man anyway, but you could see it today when we weren't doing so well. He was really, you know, getting behind the lads, you know, little high fives, you know, taps on the shoulder, things like that. It's just, he it, it, it epitomizes the captain. I, I really, really do. Really, I'm, I really am grateful that we have him. He's such a good player. And was Swift missing today? Or, do you, you know, do you- would it have been a different scoreline with, with him involved? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one with Swift sometimes because when he's on his game, honestly, but he's, he's top 10 players in this league. I mean, it's, he's done it at Reading. He's, he's done it last season. He's, he's, he's a really, really good player, but it's just when he's not on it, he's, he's, it's, like, it's like playing with 10 men. You might as well play with 10 men because he never really seems to get into the game. And you could maybe see today he wouldn't have really, you know, sort of, suited him as such because Stoke are quite a physical team you know they're, they're a bunch of big lads really um, and I don't really think that's that suits Swift's game obviously he first time on the ball uh, on you know playing the ball on, on the ground rather than being in the air or something like that because that's obviously he doesn't have those uh, qualities to his game so I think I mean, we definitely missed him regardless because obviously his attacking intent and his um, playmaking abilities are very very good so in those in those senses yes but I think God, listen, we, we can create all the chances in the world. I mean, if we can't put my away, there's no point in having a player like that on the pitch. Let's look ahead to Middlesbrough then. Um, let's have a look at the team then um, that you uh, that you played when you uh, you won four two back in August against a uh, you know a Middlesbrough side which were desperately out of sorts um, back then. This is obviously going to be a very different Middlesbrough side when you you travel to the Riverside on Saturday. Just looking back at the team, the West Brom team from August. Uh, how many of them players um, would you say have had a great season? Uh, well, I'd say Palmer. Obviously, he's got the most clean sheets uh, for any goalkeeper in a championship this season. So you can't, I can't, you can't really say he's had a bad season with those. You know, if you go off the stats and base uh, based off that, I think Kipre. I, yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't <laughs> say enough about him. He's just, he's an amazing player. Um, Kushlu, obviously, Kushlu is. He's beyond this league. I, I'm, I'm, it's got, it's got, it's, I don't have the words to describe it because I think he's could, could be a Premier League player. 
I mean, when, when we first signed him uh, last uh, in, the, in the in our Premier League season when we got relegated, it was it was amazing then, and it was it's it's amazing that he's come back to us uh, this for this season as well, and obviously last season as well. Um, you got Matt Phillips there as well. I mean, obviously he's got injured yeah. now, but up until up until his up until his injury, he was he was immense. You know, he was seven seven out of ten every week, and he was just always putting in good performances. Uh, Wallace and Swift. I mean, they've both been hit and miss this season. I mean, I think the, the weight of the captain's armband this season on Wallace has really uh, done things. I think it's been I won't say it's been quite detrimental, but it's it's had a bit of an impact on him as such because he's not really. Um, Allowed to express himself as much, and he's he's more uh, for the team rather than being a bit more selfish in a sense. I mean, Swift as well is you can say a similar thing, but obviously he had not have any uh, of those leadership um, roles in, in the team, such. So it's just a, a, a bit of an injury thing with Swift. I think obviously he, he, I don't think he played today because of the a recurring injury after that um, that calf injury. He used to stay in the Birmingham quite a bit two months ago. It was um, so. It, with him, it's 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 more injury based. He's a he's, he's a good player on his day, but he's just one of those players where he's had a. It's it's you can sort of be hit and miss with him. You're okay to miss him, but when he's there and he's on his game, he's obviously a player you value very much. All right, finally then, let's look at the uh, West Brom fixtures over this Christmas period. Let's see uh, just how many points the baggies are going to bag. Um, Middlesbrough away then this weekend, and then. A tricky home game against um, slightly more resurgent Norwich City than you might have uh, we might have seen before, um, and then the big one, the chance for you to cement your place in those playoffs as you take on Leeds, which is live on Sky on the 29th before a trip to Swansea. Um, just run us through them. How many points do you expect to be? Uh, uh, well, I mean, if we're if we're looking to get top six, you've got to think. Oh, You've got, you've got to be positive here and look to get at least six or seven points. I mean, there's some games there you could think, particularly the Leeds game where Leeds, they just seem to blow teams away sometimes. And I think where, where, there's, where, where there's games where we're not on it at all and the, the, the team we're playing is just completely a better team, where there's going to be it's going to be a scoreline. It's going to be a cricket score sometimes. You'd think <laughs> that, but it hasn't really been that way this season. But with the performances that the team's... It's against, 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 like with Leicester, really, like, you know, you can tell they're a, a better team. They're, they are a Premier League team. And I think that's, that's the same case with Leeds, really. Um, so I wouldn't expect us to beat Leeds, even though we are at home. Um, we've got a draw away at them, but they, they're they a completely different team to where they are now. It's the same with Norwich, really, as well. I mean, the start of the season, Norwich weren't anywhere near um, as good as they are now. They've got, they've got a lot of good players as well, which is a surprising thing. So you didn't expect them to do as all as they were, but obviously now they're quite um, literally realising their potential and becoming the team that everyone thinks they are. Um, and obviously with this weekend against Bora, um, it, 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 again, it's, it's the same situation really. They they weren't as good as they could have been. I mean, last year they had um, quite a few players that aren't playing from now. Akpom being that you know that their main player obviously got twenty odd goals last year and he's gone to Ajax this year, this year for ten million. So. Obviously, they're missing quite a few goals, but they're still a good side. It's still Mudders Bray in the day. I mean, they're, they're, when you think of good teams in the Championship, you think of Mudders Bray as one of them because they've been a Premier League team as recently as uh, 16, 17. So there's not exactly four sides to have uh, to play against, sorry, as well. So I'd expect at least six or seven points um, from our perspective because we want to be in the top six and we've got to be challenging teams like this if we want to be anywhere near where we want to be. But it's obviously very tricky. I'm not naive to the fact that we could slip up easily quite here, but um, I'd like to see us pick up at least six or seven points. Okay. All right, then give us a score prediction then for uh, your trip to the Riverside. You'll be heading up there. Take your warm clothes with you, won't you? Yeah, literally. I mean, it's it's always a it's always a cold one when you go everywhere. You, go, you know, anywhere above the N6, it's always a always a cold one, regardless where you're going. Um, I'd like to think we'd get it, we'd snatch a win. I mean, I said this against Stoke as well. I said oh, it'd be a close game, and it, it was today. I mean, it was a very close game. I mean, both teams weren't on job, really. They weren't performing to as well as they can. Um, and I'd like to think we'd perform a little bit better at least next week against Borough. Um, so in that case, I'd go for a one and away win. All right. All right. Cheers, Aaron, for joining us. Have a great Christmas. Um, we will see you. Um... How close you are with your predictions when we uh, when we return in the new year? All right, nice one, fella. Thank you. Yeah, man, and you nice one.